This is a complete history of the development of punk on the lower east side of New York City from 1950 to 1975. We start with Henry Smith in 1950, a beatnik weirdo living in New York City. His huge collections were insane, and Easter eggs and paper airplanes and rare records. He had about a million and sixty. To change America through music was his hope, and to make some money because he was broke, he compiled a triple-decker collection of songs from his records, released at the Smithsonian Anthology of American Folk. On a began to work as foretold, this weird music began to take hold. It sparked an interest in these forms of life underground from the norms, and soon millions of folk records were being sold. By the early 60s, Dylan and Baez, Phil Oaks, they were doing copies of these old folks. Then one strange folk band downtown called the Holy Modal Rounders began to make it more anarchistic with weird voices and drug jokes. Mom's out there, but you're gonna get your man died. I'm out here, kicking the gong for you, euphoria, euphoria. When your mind starts feeling out walking, inside voices are squealing and squawking, floating around on a belly, now I'm to euphoria. That was 1964. Then in 1965, Lou Reed and John Cale and the Ludlow Street Dive had a similar musical spin, also on acoustic guitar with violin, with even more New York Street drug jive. Hey, white boy, what you doing uptown? Then in 1965, the Holy Modal Rounders met some other beatnik intellectual thugs over on East 10th Street who called themselves the Fugs. They were recorded by Harry Smith playing the punkiest songs yet to exist, lo-fi noisy shit about poetry, sex, and drugs. I don't have a bedtime, I don't need to come, for I have become an amphetamine If you don't like sleeping and don't want to thrill, then you should take lots of amphetamine. recorded two fuck sessions, including their incredible song, Nothing. Monday, nothing. poets with real topics to speak out, and through the new underground scene, this weird music could leak out, beginning the idea that anybody could do it without needing much musical ability to it, and this new crazy music was soon labeled Freak Out. In 1966, the Fug signed to New York indie label ESP. The same label put out a band called The Gods, spelled with a Z. The Gods accomplished the feat of making even the Fug's music sound sweet, with the least musical folk punk racket in history. from the West Coast hippie scene, New York underground music was far from mainstream. It was intellectual, but noisy and hectic. And then the Velvet Underground went electric and made folk punk more beautiful and more extreme. <laughs> New York's strange folk punk tide. In 1968 came David Peel on the Lower East Side. They recorded an album out in the street, screaming and sloppy. Danny Field signed them to Electra Records and it sold almost a million copies, but songs like I Like Marijuana and Up Against the Wall, Motherfucker, Inside. <laughs> were a freak out band in Detroit, except people ignored them until Danny Fields brought them to New York and had John Cale from the Velvets record them. 
While most acid rock was turning into progressive, the Stooges instead pushed the raw and aggressive, and Iggy Pop sang about degradation and boredom. Well, 70, David Peel's second album came with some amazing songs and some a little lame. And most pre-punk histories, Peel gets forgot because he was a hippie singing lots of songs about pot. But his second album is the first album with the real sound that electric punk rock became. <laughs> about seven years before it was something The Clash would do, David Peel mixed punk with reggae on the amazing song I Want to Kill You Once. <laughs> Mr. Banks first writes the word punk to describe 60s enthusiastic teenage rock junk. 1972, Lenny K puts out the 60s garage rock compilation Nuggets and coins the phrase punk rock in the liner notes of it, although punk rock would soon come to mean something different from the sort of 60s pop songs that Lester and Lenny thought. <laughs> playing music with an East Side poet named Patti Smith, who would use it to mix her wild poetry with simple rock stuff, like the fuzz in a way, but less rough. A postmodern way to take high art and low art and fuse it. Yeah. 1972-73 is around when the New York Dolls start mixing trash and drag fashion with a rock and roll heart. The Johnny Thunders dated Johansson sound mixed old style simple rock with the new New York underground and sort of defined the moment when stupid on purpose became the new smart. He began punk fashion as well, with spiked hair and ripped clothes worn by a poet named Richard Hell. Hell was in television, the Neon Boys, the Heartbreakers, the Voidoids, and he wrote the song that gave the new 70s punk generation its first anthem yell. <laughs> Start having punk shows, the television, Patty Smith, and the Ramones. 76 punk fans even begins, and the whole thing moved over to England. England stole all the credit, and that's how it goes. But yeah, we did. 